Hi, this is Tom Fleming, and today I'm going to give you a free lesson on how to paint a space field with a, a moon. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is use a flat um, number two, or well, it's actually a half, uh, low Corel half uh, brush, and I'm going to lay in uh, a, a nice dark field with watercolor. Um, in general, I don't like to use just black. I like to add other colors in there to create a little bit more of an interesting look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there and I'm going to start with a Payne's Gray. I'm going to use a lot of water and really wet down uh, my, my watercolor in my palette. While that's soaking, I'm going to go in with just plain water and just um, with just the residual color that's left on it, I'm going to just start laying in a real wet wash. I'm being somewhat careful around the uh, edges of the moon because I want to keep somewhat of a clean edge and really letting that water just kind of flow all over, all over the board. Um, basically the steps I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in the dark background around the moon, then while this is, uh, while that uh, wash is drying, I will go in and start working on some of the craters and details of the moon, and by the time that, that the, the uh, dark wash is dried, I'll go back in and add the star field and uh, the little details that, um, that make, uh, make for a real nice sci-fi sky. And I'm just going to do this pretty much as like a vignette. Um, I'm not going to fill the whole board. Um, the reason why I'm laying down a wash, a very, very light, um, almost clear wash, is because um, it lends for better blending for the watercolor. If you do a dry wash on just dry board, the watercolor just absorbs into that paper too quickly and you get real hard lines and edges and that is not something that uh, adds to the effect of a space sky. So right now I have a pretty good base right there and I'm going to go in and just start letting this watercolor just start bleeding all over the place. And I want a good amount of it because we do want a dark sky. And the nice thing about space is that there's all kinds of flowing shapes of gases and um, interesting things that go on in the, in the sky. And the watercolor really lends itself to to these shapes. Now you can see as I'm laying down the watercolor, it's flowing down because we're on an angle here on the, on the table. So what you can do is you can twist your board and as you go around, it will start flowing outwards and create all kinds of like interesting little patterns. Um, I'm using Payne's Gray as just my base. And then I'm going to go in and add a couple of other, couple of other colors that will make it real interesting looking. And we're going to let the uh, colors just fade out to the edges. And there you have your Payne's Gray. I'm going to add a little bit of lamp black also. And that's going to add like a real dark richness to it, um, where your stars will really pop and glow. And I want to go right to the edge of the moon, because what I'm going to do is, after, after we lay the star field in, I'm going to go, I'm going to let this water, this wash dry and we're going to go back in 
with an airbrush and add a glowing kind of aura around the moon along with some of the stars. And you don't have to always blend the colors together. Sometimes you can just um, do little spots and it creates nice little um, kind of flowing shapes. See, look at that. That's almost like a, a cloudy, cloudy sky going on there. And um, the water, you, sometimes it's nice to let the watercolor do the work. I'm going to add a little bit more paint gray because I'm a little bit too close there to the edge. I want a little bit more room. Okay. And we'll get a little bit darker up in here. All right. Okay. So, we have a pretty dark field back there. That'll be a great backdrop for some star work. Okay. And while that's drying, I'm going to start working on some of the uh, details inside the moon. And I'm going to do that with a bit of a smaller brush. Um, this is a, uh, this is a uh, Sable, a Kalinske Sable brush number four. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add, I'm just going to add water to the areas that I want to um, blend some of the, some of the colors. And if it touches the edge and bleeds, that's, that's fine. Um, you could just blend that in. And I'm just adding just water around the areas that I'm going to work on. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of cerulean blue. And, and you see how I touched the edge there and that bled out? That's, that's fine because that actually acts as like a crater. And if you just touch, you can add little details. And, uh, and it actually looks like a, a, creates a texture on the moon surface. And we're just going to go through here. And you're making little circular shapes. Since craters are mostly circular, we'll blend, pick up a little bit more. Cerulean, and you're going to do a combination of strokes to create to create a wash, and then dots to create the texture of the uh, of the craters. And every every once in a while, you want to let the paint go into the dry areas, and that'll create your hard edge where it'll be a more a, a little bit more of a defined crater. You know, right here, we'll, we'll get a little bit more. And kind of, you can do like a little fading of the craters as you go out. Okay. Now I'm just going to take some more cerulean with a lot of water. It's a very, very light wash. And I'm just going to kind of go into the middle of the moon just to kill that white a little bit. It's a little bit too, a little bit too light. And we're just going to go around the edge. That's a little bit too black, so I just pick that up with the brush, dab it. And we'll just go back in and do a couple of little dabs of blue in there. OK. Now, it looks like our, our uh, dark field in the background there is, uh, is a little bit too wet. So I'm going to take a step back right now, let that dry, and we'll be back in a second. 